things are changing on the road. Everywhere you look, there's new technology. New procedures. New equipment. And at the same time, vision of the general code of operating rules to reflect today's modern railroad is occurring. Old methods and procedures are going by the wayside. Timetable schedules, train orders, extras, work extras, and regular trains are terms no longer part of today's railroad. This program will highlight rules whose intent or application have significantly changed and will give an overview of how that rule applies. Remember, this program is a review of operating rules that have changed. It is not a substitute for the general code of operating rules. So, let's begin our review of the second edition of the General Code of Operating Rules. Rule 11. Unattended fusee has these clarifications added. When a train finds an unattended fusee burning on or near its track, it must stop before passing the fusee, if good train handling procedures can be applied. Rule 11 has been clarified further for trains moving at restricted speed. Trains moving at restricted speed must stop short before passing a burning fusee. An unattended burning fusee applies only to the track on or near to which it is burning. Fusees placed in this area will affect movement of a following train. Fusees dropped by trains going against the current of traffic will affect train movement on both tracks. Rule 12, torpedoes. Now requires that two torpedoes be placed on each rail, not less than 150 feet apart. Rule 19, markers, talks about highly visible markers and the use of alternative markers. Rule 19A, highly visible markers, deals with ETDs and ETMs. Highly visible markers are equipped with a photoelectric cell, which causes the marker to automatically illuminate as lighting conditions change. These markers must be inspected by a qualified employee at the initial terminal. At crew change points, the engineer may use the telemetry display to determine that the marker is functioning properly, or the inbound crew may make a roll by inspection. The rule requires the engineer to know the condition of the telemetry device. Rule 19B describes the use of alternative markers. An alternative marker can be a red flag, a red reflector, or a light fixture used to mark the rear of a train. A highly visible marker is not required under these circumstances. When a defective car is placed at the rear of a train for movement to a repair point, when the rear of the train is disabled, the remainder of the train may proceed without a highly visible marker. And when a highly visible marker becomes inoperative, the train may proceed to the next point for repairs or replacement. Rule 82, reverse movements, requires all reverse moves by a train be made at restricted speed, prepared to stop short of men or equipment. In non-signaled TWC territory or DTC territory, the crew must first secure authority from the train dispatcher before beginning a reverse movement. In CTC territory, signal TWC or Rule 251 territory, a reverse move within the block is permitted without permission from the train dispatcher. In CTC territory, signal TWC or Rule 251 territory, when a reverse move requires a train to re-enter the preceding block, the crew must first obtain authority from the train dispatcher or control operator before beginning the move. Rule 93, the yard limit rule, still allows main track usage with the current of traffic by trains or engines without additional authority and without providing flag protection. However, 
engines must give way as soon as practicable on the approach of a train. Within yard limits, freight trains and engines must avoid delay of Amtrak movements. Rule 94, restricted limits, now has the same requirements as Rule 93 for movement against the current of traffic. Movements against the current of traffic must be authorized and protected by track warrant, track bulletin, the yardmaster, or another authorized employee. Rule 103, shoved, kicked, or dropped cars, now requires that the crewman protecting the crossing must be positioned on the ground before the movement is made. An exception to Rule 103 as to when additional warning is not required was also rephrased. When crossing gates are in a fully lowered position, or when a crew member riding the lead car can see that no traffic is approaching, then ground protection is not required. Rule 103A, Automatic Crossing Devices, has a second condition added when further protection is required. Further protection is required before entering a crossing when the movement is closely following a preceding movement. Rule 103E, Handling Ahead of Engine, as amended in the Santa Fe timetable, now requires an authorized freight train to move at restricted speed. The biggest change in Rule 305, delayed within a block, are the exceptions. Within CTC territory, a train may proceed prepared to stop at the next signal until it can be seen that the next signal indicates proceed and the track is clear to that signal. Rule 305A, approach to automatic interlocking, is a new rule. When a train passes the approach signal in advance of an automatic interlocking and the approach signal indicates proceed, if the speed is less than 25 miles per hour, the train must proceed prepared to stop until it can be seen that the signal at the automatic interlocking still indicates proceed. Rule 315A, dual control switches and derails, now requires a train stopped by a stop signal governing movement over a dual control switch to have a crew member conduct a ground inspection. After the crew member inspects the switch from the ground and is satisfied the switch is safe for movement, the train is signaled to proceed. The crew member remains at the switch until the lead wheels pass the signal. After the movement passes the signal, a ground inspection of each switch is then conducted before the lead wheels pass over that switch. Rule 317, entering main track at hand-operated or spring switch in ABS territory, requires a crew member, after opening the switch, to wait five minutes. After waiting for five minutes, the crew member on the ground must check whether train movement is seen or heard before giving a proceed signal. Another addition to Rule 317 are conditions where the five-minute wait is not required. When the main track between siding switches is occupied by a standing train to be passed or a train which has been met. When a train in TWC territory outside of yard limits is given work between authority. Rule 318, initiating movement between signals, directs that all movements are made at restricted speed until the lead wheels pass the next signal. This rule applies when entering a block at a switch not having a governing signal, when the aspect of the previous signal is not known and when the direction of movement is changed. Rule 351, track and time limits, requires that limits be cleared before time expires. 
If the employee granted track and time limits cannot clear the limits and is unable to make contact with the control operator, track and time limits will be extended until the control operator is reached or the employee clears the limits by signal indication. TWC Rule 400, Authority. Trains must comply with track warrant requirements in yard limits and restricted limits. TWC Rule 409, Occupying Same Limits, had paragraph 1 rephrased. Trains and engines occupying the same limits are required to provide flag protection according to Rule 99. Now, when the last train is instructed not to follow the limits in front of any preceding train, the train may be relieved of providing flag protection. When Rule 409 requires a train to flag to the rear, and it leaves the main track before reaching its second named point, it must report itself clear or leave a flagman to prevent a following train from passing. Paragraph 3 is in addition to Rule 409. When a train or trains are passing on Box 2 authority through the limits of another train that has been granted a work between authorization by track warrant, none of the three trains is required to provide flag protection. However, all trains must move through the overlapping limits at restricted speed. When track warrant authority extends through yard limits, Rule 93 provisions apply, but track warrant instructions must still be complied with. TWC Rule 410, in effect, is rephrased. The new rule now automatically extends the time limit when a crew is unable to contact the dispatcher until contact is made. Rule 455A, protection for on-track machines, was added to protect rail detector cars. Rail detector cars can now be protected with a track bulletin form B and may operate without the use of yellow and green flags as required in Rule 10. The track bulletin form B issued to the rail detector car cannot be used to protect other gangs or machines. Rule 463, voiding track bulletins, now allows track bulletins to be voided in three ways. The dispatcher can verbally void individual lines of a track bulletin, a part of a track bulletin, or an entire track bulletin. Or the dispatcher can use line 17, other specific instruction on a track warrant in TWC territory. The dispatcher can also avoid a track bulletin by issuing a new Form A track bulletin. Knowing the general code of operating rules is important to your safety. Take time to carefully compare this second edition of the rules with the general orders.